I thought it'd be fun to do a quick time sketch using a fountain pen and I bought these dollar fountain pens for the princely sum of £7.99 for 10 of them so basically 80p per pen I have already done a time sketch with one of them and I found that the the ink wasn't quite dark enough I just used fountain pen ink so this time I thought I would use carbon ink so carbon ink is made in Japan and it is a waterproof fountain pen ink because most fountain pen inks aren't waterproof and if you try and put something like Indian ink into a fountain pen it'll clog the whole mechanism and you may well ruin your pen. You obviously don't want this to dry inside your fountain pen because it's waterproof and you could get yourself into all sorts of problems but you can certainly leave it in your pen for a week and it shouldn't clog up the mechanism. So let's fill this pen to start with. Now the reason I went for these dollar pens is because they're piston pens so you can fill the whole of that body with ink rather than just having a converter so you should be able to get an awful lot more ink in there than a normal cartridge or a converter. Stick it in and then you twiddle it and you can see that is pretty much full I hope. I thought I might have to fill it twice but that's pretty good. It's got a nice little feature which is that end cap and that just stops you twiddling the end by mistake and splurting quite a lot of ink all over the place. Once you've filled your fountain pen always a good idea just to wipe off any excess. I'm going to do a quick scribble just to make sure the ink's flowing which it is straight away. Brilliant! And what I've got here is my little A5 moleskin sketchbook that I do quite a few very quick sketches in just a bit of pen and wash you know just so you can see the sorts of things I do um, when I'm away or something that catches my fancy or I've got a five minute stop um, it's it's nice to do and I've got a few more films of these sorts of sketches if you fancy seeing some of them so I am up to date here I've got this lovely picture of the, the Bridge of Sighs in Oxford and I thought that'd be nice because Oxford's not very far away and I thought it'd be quite fun in a really limited time to be able to simplify this architecture. If I'm doing a sketch, if, whether it's from real life or, or a reference, I'm always looking for shapes and here we've got this side shape, obviously the beautiful bridge and this wedge shaped here that of the, the building that goes behind it. It's worth having a plan of where you're going to start and how you're going to sort of fit it all in. I'm going to see how much I can do, say do the inking in 10 minutes and then a bit of watercolour in five maybe, so 15 in total. I'm going to start with that brilliant bridge. So the clock starts now. And I'm just going to do a sort of continuous line, sort of uh, mark, but I am allowed to take my uh, pen off the paper. But I think continuous line is rather nice because it almost gives the feeling of a lot more detail going on than actually is. It's a slight cheat, to be honest, because sometimes the the lines that you put across the paper, sort of your, our eyes read them as extra details and we think more's going on than that she has been put on. I'm liking the blackness of the ink and I'm finding this is quite a smooth pen for you know, ATP. So if you fancy having a go with um, a fountain pen well, I really don't think it's a bad little thing just to have a go and given that you can let's get this line 
Yeah, given that you can get 10 for £8, well, you could have different coloured inks in each, and that could be really rather nice. Let's go up here. Oh, gosh, that's a wonky old line. But don't worry, if you do do some wonky lines, really don't worry. Now, look at the angles. This is such sharp perspective here. And then come down. We'll come back to that in a second. So we've got this going down here. And then we've got those lovely three arches there. That's great. I'm going to come down, up. Just noticing that this side comes down a bit further. And then we've got we can see the underside of that bridge and that sort of goes to there let's get some of this in and then some of that Because I'm quite push, well, not quite, very push for time, I'm sort of putting some of the smaller details in quite early on rather than sort of getting big shapes and, and coming back and doing smaller shapes later. Love all these keystones around the top of these um, windows. I want to get those in for sure. So let's, if I something I like, I might as well do it now rather than waiting till the end and maybe not having time. Just look how I'm um, holding the pen as well. Uh, I'm trying to hold it quite a way up the barrel to get a really expressive line. And I mean, I'm a pretty wonky drawer at the best of times and these are very wonky lines, but I don't, think that matters and I hopefully will be forgiven for that. Quite like that we've got a little bit of greenery coming through here. So we might put a little bit of that very boring looking building right at the end of that road. How on earth they got planning permission for that? I don't know. So let's bring that down there. And left quite enough space here let's see what I can sort of amend that as I go um I'm gonna say that line and wash is a lot more forgiving than you think now I'd obviously done some of that arch wrong but I reckon that we'll we'll lose those mistakes just bring some more lines up here to give that feeling of the perspective going away. Put some windows in here. Getting obviously way bigger as they come towards us. Let's more windows here. So 
so we've got the gist of what's going on we could put more detail in i've totally lost the space for this lovely coat of arms here which i'm so i'm sure i will not be forgiven for what i do like the sweep of that road and the double yellow lines. There's some bollards I'm going to miss out because I haven't got time. I'm going to miss out the bicycles. I do think it's pretty important that we get a bit of detail in these windows because they are very of the period. And because this one's closer, let's go over and give the impression of a bit more detail going on. Okay. I keep forgetting to do my continuous line. ones at the top are smaller it's actually open I think that's a bit of detail that's going to be too much for me loving the lines and the brickwork as well something going on there Right, I think that's probably enough in terms of the pen work. Now we can splosh some colour on. If you're out and about, you're probably only going to have a tiny little set with you that will have really limited colours. You know, that is just life. If you have got a little spray, then that's great to just loosen up those colours and get them ready to go. This little set was a prototype of the line and wash set from Derwent that I was lucky enough to be asked to test. I'm out and about sketching. I really like these water brushes because the water is in the handle and therefore you're not going to knock something over. And they're not brilliant tips, but they're good enough for splashing on a bit of colour. So we haven't got much um, to choose from. And we've got really basic tools, but I reckon we can do a fair amount. What I want to do is just get on this fantastic gold. The other thing to think about if you're out and about sketching is how much water you put on your painting, because if it's a nice warm summer's day, well, yippee i -yay, it's going to all dry good and quick. But if it is a good day and you're sketching in the UK, then obviously that's not so good and you're going to need to let it all dry before you put any pen work on. Oh, that's a nice. I've forgotten how lovely that orange colour is. So let's put some of that on just to be really bright and breezy. With these pens, just give them a squeeze to release the water and you're going to have to clean this off in between. Uh, what can we do? I do put a few extra colours in here because I didn't really like the... Um, selection of colours. I didn't think they were that useful. So let's just put in a bit of that phthalo blue. So we've got some sky and then got some grey. So we'll 
this is shadow this side we'll take that up that's brighter that side and we'll just pull that over tell you what might be quite fun because i said i really like the sweep of those double yellow lines it's actually putting them in like that If you want to do splatters, they can be quite hard with a, a water brush. So you're probably better off trying to load it and put in splatters like that rather than because if you squeeze the brush, you will get very large blobs rather than gentle little splatters. Just as a thought. Let's just darken down these windows in places okay I'm gonna to have to let that dry before I put any ink on top and then we'll come back but I will stop the clock for that bit I'm really impressed how the ink hasn't moved at all um, it really is waterproof so that's lovely so that's now dry we can just check using the back of a hand and I have to work out what I need to put in so what I want to do I think is more detail here to pull this forward definitely more detail on these lovely arches more detail to pull this forward and what I really like is the uh, the sort of paving stones on this pavement so I think they would be fun to put in Let, let's just see what we can do right start that clock so I'm going to emphasize a few of these lines because after all that bridge has to be the focal point and now let's look at how these go and get again just using that continuous line haven't got time to count anything but let's just give the impression of architectural detail there and I'm interested to see how the ink flows and whether it's still okay over the watercolour because sometimes you can find that the watercolour sort of almost clogs the, uh, the sort of the nib of the pen. So I'm interested and so far so good. Now funnily enough you can't actually see much going on on in these far arches because there isn't any light showing through but i am going to put some pretend sort of detail in there because i think it looks out of balance otherwise this is a shield or something for presumably from the university want to strengthen some of those and pull forward that carving I think maybe if I put some block work or something that will strengthen the arch so that that comes forward like that that's better then if we put some stuff like that right let's see so these are all carved haven't got time to do them all so I can just pretend, not pretend but um, just put in a little bit what I haven't done is the frames around these windows so that would help 
we've got sort of a canopy over these two lower windows then a sill so I just emphasize a few of those that center line of the sash is stronger that's better this is a very strong line across here so let's put that we've got some shadows here I don't know that I'm going to have time for the block work um, which is a shame because that's rather lovely just need to emphasize a little bit through here that there's just some more going on right what I said I really liked oh that's interesting ah I thought the pen had run out I think it just stopped flowing for a little bit yeah it has it obviously said about things clogging oh that's better we've got it back again I just want to put these paving slabs in now I haven't done them in the pattern that they are actually there simply because of time I quite like those bollards in the end that just sort of back here so let's do that so that's an important line for leading our eye in and we have got bricks and blocks coming in there now got the iron work here so let's get that in at least there and then we can just see the sort of revere of the window here can't see an awful lot there's Shame we can't read that, that must be the street name. Oh gosh, that's wonky. Say so even by my wonky standards. It's because you're starting to panic with the time going on. indicate that something is happening up here it would look odd if it was all blank right we've got our lovely yellow lines I'm going to put a central line down the road just to lead our eye in further I really do wish that I'd um, put some bicycles in but I haven't Just put some block like that. And do you know, I think I'm going to stop there. Just a little. A few more lines there. Because I think that's really recognisable. It's got a nice feeling into the middle. We've got our lovely bridge. We can see some sky through it. What more do we want to do? If I was being pedantic, gosh, perish the thought, would like a little bit of sky sh to show that that is sky through there. Don't like that those are just single lines. <laughs> I think we're done. So I'll look forward to actually timing this and see how long it took. I think that was about 15 minutes. I really should just sort of have a stopwatch or something love how the um, carbon ink is so it went on top of the watercolor really nicely it went underneath the watercolor really nicely without any bleeding or any fuzzing of edges and that little ATP pen has really stood up to me whizzing around and trying to go really quickly it did stop flowing at one point over here but started again without me having to really sort of give it some welly 
it's quite a thick pen and quite a bold line so if you were doing a scene that had a lot of distance in it I think you would struggle to get that feeling um, what you would have to do is bring the foreground a lot further forward by putting more detail and maybe sort of trying to thicken up the lines forward and therefore by contrast that would feel further away because as a general rule a thicker line feels it's like it's closer detail feels like it's closer what I haven't tried doing and I'm just having a little go now is actually blocking in some colour there are some sort of drains or things there and that seems to work pretty nicely I mean don't know whether we want to go dark under this bridge but you could if you wanted to I don't think I would do it solid because I just think that wouldn't really suit the style of this sketch and it is a very obviously quick sketch but the pen seems good if you do want to do slightly more solid areas so having done those there I think we need a few more solid areas here otherwise our eye is going to be caught and pulled in that direction which is not what I want but yeah I'm I'm impressed with this little pen if you're wanting to do a really quick sketch with a very cheap pen then I really like how it's how it's working quality ink really seems to have made a difference if you check out the last video I did I found that I couldn't get really black lines with it and had to resort to using a fine liner on top but this where I'm going over lines is really working to pull that forward so I'm, I'm super happy with that and I think I'll be doing more sketching with these lovely little pens